Hello, I'm Will Gormley. This is the beginning of my Lone Star Holster Pattern Pack tutorial. To illustrate the adaptability of this holster pattern to belts wider than the one and a half inch pant belt, I'll make a holster to fit on this vintage style two and a quarter inch utility belt. The holster will fit this 1947 Colt Transition Official Police with six inch bull barrel. While the Lone Star holster is designed to create weapon retention between the sewn-in welt pressing against the weapon's frame, this transitional Colt has a beautiful two-tone polish and matte finish I don't want extra wear on. So the welt will be trimmed back and a safety thumb brake strap will be used for retaining the weapon instead. While I know the pattern number five fits the Colt official police, I'll show how the holsters and welt gauges are used to determine which pattern would best fit any specific weapon. Patterns and instructions for making the holster and welt gauges are included in the Lone Star Holster Pattern Pack. Each holster pattern is designed to fit multiple weapons. As such, different weapons may need a different thickness of welt to achieve a friction fit against the weapon's frame. Variations in the weight of the leather will also make a difference in the thickness of the welt. To get the correct fit, thicknesses can be added or subtracted to the welt. So, taking measurements with the holster and welt gauges at different times during construction is required. Start by placing the weapon into the holster gauge until the trigger guard is at the top of the cutout of the gauge. On my welt gauge, I have a dot at the top of the gauge at the three quarter inch mark to help quickly identify spacing. Insert the welt gauge between the open ears of the holster gauge and press it flush to the frame of the weapon. In this case, the seven and a half inch marking on the holster gauge aligns closely with the seven eighths marking on the welt gauge. Measuring across the holster pattern where the trigger guard will rest on the top of the welt. In the case of holster pattern number five, the holster pattern measures right at seven and a half inches and the welt measures 13 sixteenths inches very close to what the welt gauge measures. Having decided on pattern number five, the first step is to trace the pouch. If this were to be a holster for a pant belt, then the pouch tracing would be aligned with the skirt pattern to trace the skirt and complete the holster pattern. But since this holster will be riding on a two and a quarter utility belt, the belt width pattern is used to adjust the space needed for the width of the belt. Align the tracing of the holster pouch fold line with the belt line pattern two and a quarter inch line. With a marker, trace the leading edge of the width pattern to the tracing film. Also trace the two and a quarter inch line from the skirt side of the width pattern. The existing tracing is then aligned with the fold line of the skirt pattern to trace the skirt pattern. Connect the missing space between the pouch tracing and the skirt tracing with a straight line. Trace the welt and the loop patterns to the same tracing film to keep them all in the same place in case you need to make the same holster again. As you can see here, I have modified the welt pattern so it will not create excessive wear on the frame of the weapon. Next, lay the tracing film on damp leather and begin transferring the pattern to the leather with a stylus. I like to start with a straight edge, transferring all the straight lines first. Cut out the holster parts once all are transferred to the damp leather. When the leather pattern is cut out, transfer the markings that limit edge dressing on the flesh side of the hide. At the top of the pouch, mark the limit so the edge of the leather isn't rounded where the main stem will be sewn. At the toe, extend the line from the decorative edge down around the toe and onto the back. 
Likewise, mark the back along the side near the toe to keep from rounding up into the main stem where the pouch will be sewn together with the welt in between. This shows the area of the flesh side of the toe of the pouch that will be rounded between the marks. Quickly, I round the flesh side down to the top of the throat so when I'm dressing the edge of the skirt, I don't accidentally overshoot the mark. My next step is to skive away the holster body where the thumb brake safety strap will be sewn into the holster pouch. To do this, I place the holster body flesh side up. Then I reverse the tracing film pattern and line up the safety strap slot in the holster body with the slot in the tracing film pattern. Then I trace the stitching lines onto the flesh side of the holster body. This serves as my guide for skiving away this portion of the holster body. This isn't a necessary step, but helps the safety strap integrate into the holster body without the bulge of two full layers of leather when sewn together. I use a number four safety skiver to narrow the leather around the slot and where the safety strap will be sewn to the holster body. Next, I dampen the leather front and back so I don't leave a spot of discoloration around the slot and the stitching area that will be hammered down into shape. Insert a three-quarter inch strap into the slot from the flesh side. I line it up where the stitches will be, then I use a stainless steel hammer to conform the leather to the strap. Next, I mark the stitching holes while I have the strap in place to support the leather. Remove the strap, wrap the holster in plastic, and allow to case for tooling and shaping later. While the holster is casing to allow the moisture to soak evenly through the fibers, I take this opportunity to cement the flesh sides of the two welt halves together. I try not to allow the cement to get on the edges where it can interfere with dyeing and finishing. The most important factor in cementing the two welt halves together is aligning the top and the outside edges. Every other inconsistency in alignment can easily be trimmed. I set the two cemented halves together by lightly tapping the welt for strong contact. With leather cased, it's time for decoration. Since cutting doesn't always exactly follow the lines, I often don't mark the border. After the leather is cut, I use a compass to lay out the edge. I left this holster loop plain so I can show how I lay out basket stamping patterns. On this specific holster, I'm using my old Durango Colorado stamp, just for fun. Using the swivel knife, I'll cut the border lines and then I'll cut out around the maker's mark. That will be followed by the beveler first along the border lines and then around the maker mark. I've made lines for my favorite small basket stamp on tracing film. To transfer these to leather, I roll packaging tape sticky side out and stick it to my stone. I make sure it's big enough to stick out past the leather I'm working on. With the leather stuck to the tape, I lay the tracing film down and allow the tape to hold the tracing film in place as well. Then everything stays stabilized while I trace the lines to the damp leather. With the tracing film removed, I begin building basket stamp around one side of the maker's mark. I'm careful to keep the pattern lined up. After finishing one half, I'll work my way around the maker's mark and tie the basket weave together on the other side. When the basket weave design is done, I shape the holster loop and allow it to dry. This will help the loop lay nicely on the holster when assembled.